Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we will be doing sweet tooth incorporation room. Uh, this room is about conducting penetration testing on a machine that hosts influx database and uh, a Docker container. So we will be doing the exploitation for both parts, and at the same time, we'll be answering the questions. So let's get started. So we see here the in-map scan. We have a couple of open ports. We have uh, uh, RPC bind, also we have SSH on port 22, 22, and we have HTTP on port 80, 86. As you can see uh, on the web server, there is influx database running, and the version is 130. Now, if you access the database via the browser, So here the page is not found, but if you go to Google and So here the page is empty, right? Uh, now, giving the nmap scan, we have got the nmap, we have got the influx DP version. So this is a kind of a hint. So here the page is kind of empty and it is giving 404 page not found. That's fine. Now, if you go to the nmap scan, we see the version of the influx database is 130. With enough researching and googling, you will find uh, a ready exploitation for this database, for this type of database. Uh, you can access that in this URL, you can find it here. The explanation of how to exploit influx database. So if there was a zero day exploit about this database, you can read all the explanation here. And the steps to reproduce the exploit, the exploit yeah, here. So, basically, the first step is to access this URL slash debug slash requests. When accessing this URL, a user usernames will be leaked out. So, if you go to that URL, as you can see here, a username with this identifier has been leaked with two writes and two queries. Next step, this username needs an authentication token, JWT. So we need the authentication token here in order to perform queries on the database. Performing queries on Influx database requires you to be authenticated and logged in. So we use the JWT token to create a token for that user we have just found. Using that token, we can conduct a curl request um, to authenticate ourselves and to perform queries on the database. So going to JSON token here, make sure the values are as is here and yeah, okay. Put the username as you have found and the expired date. This is in epoch format. Now to find the exact format for uh, that date, just go to Google and search for approach format time converter. Now it's giving you the, the, the time format in real time. But in JSON Web Tokens, you have to, uh, you know, put a token that is due in the future. Why? Because you want to prevent the expiration of the token. So what you can do here, you can change the date here to 2022. Click human date to timestamp and you will get the epoch timestamp. This expired, this output in 2023. Okay. So this token won't expire, right? Unless two years has passed. So basically we are in 2021. The the year we selected 2023, so the uh, token or the uh, timestamp 
or the JWT token will be valid for two years. So you can replace the time here and make sure the secret is empty and you will get the token. So get the token. The third step is to authenticate. How to authenticate? You have two methods. You can use either perp suite or you can use curl. The short method is to use curl. So this is the full command. I'm gonna replace the token. So let's explain the command a bit. So basically here we have the token and authentication bearer we put this as outlined in the steps of the exploitation and let me cancel this one so basically curl dash g here is the url and slash query indicating that we want to access the uh, we want to perform queries on the database dash dash data dash url encode here we put the query so for me the query will start we can start the query as for example show databases show databases you can get the list of all of the influx database commands from the official website and go to influx db commands check we want to find the query commands so that exploration so here you can see the uh, commands that exploration let's check the select statement the very close you can find all of these here but go back now to the command line so here we would like to show the databases since we have inserted the right token okay with the right that contains the right username we will be able to query the influx database and show all the databases upon hitting enter we can see the output so the output indicates the columns of the databases credentials docker tanks mixer internal so these are the current databases so let's go back and see the questions enumeration do a tcp port scan what is the name of the database software running on one of these ports influx db Okay. Refresh the page. I think the page needs to be refreshed. So, what is the database user you find? So basically, we found that the database user by visiting slash debug slash requests. That was the database user. So grab this. What was the temperature of the water tank at UTC Unix timestamp? Now here I think we get to find the information by performing the queries. So the water tank, we have a database called, called tanks here. So what we can do, we can select this database. I think it's a better idea if I take the command as a whole and perform the modifications on the query using a text editor so now we've got that we have one database called tanks so what we can do here we can say query db equal tanks okay now what we would like to find what was the temperature of the water tank? Before doing that, let's see the uh, columns of this database. 
So to find the columns, you can perform this query. Instead of show databases, we can type show series on, and here we can put the DB name. So the DB name is tanks. And no need to put that here. So let's copy that and find the columns on the database. Yep, I guess we forgot the code, double code here. Okay, now take this. So the columns are fruit, juice tank, gelatin tank, sugar tank, and water tank. So now we have the column water tank. So to find now the temperature, we have to select everything from this column. To do that, let's get back to the query and do a slight modification. So query db equal tanks and here type select star from water tank. Let's see how this plays out. So taking a look at the output, we can see that we have the columns time, filling height, and temperature. So for time, we have got this format, which is most which most probably it is um, RFC, and here we have the temperature or the filling height, and here we have got the temperature. So we're looking to find, let's go back to the question. We're looking to find the temperature of the water tank at this UTC Unix time stop. So we can take this one and find or convert it to the proper format outlined here. So I already done that here, convert. And these are the formats. Most probably we're talking about RFC. Okay. Or W3C. Let me try with this one. So I can say grip, and here put the time. So as you can see, we have got a valid time. So at this time, okay, the temperature was 22.5. That was correct. What is the highest, next question, what is the highest RPM? The motor of the mixer reached. What is the highest RPM the motor of the mixer reached? Okay, let's get back to the queries we have written in the notes. So let's relist, relist, sorry, relist the uh, columns on the tanks or relist databases, I guess. See if there is something about the RPM. So grids, docker, tanks, mixer. So this time we will select mixer in the database. So here, instead of tanks, select mixer to show the columns. So, mixer stats. Okay. So here, type mixer. And select star from water tank it will be mixer stats let's list out all of the values in this column let's see what do we have all the keys oh come on again we have to go through all of this all right let's get back what is the highest rpm of the motor of the mixer reached good question so here we have the mixer stats. We have time, filling height, motor RPM, temperature. So we're looking to find the highest motor RPM. All right. So it's very hard to go through the values manually to find the highest values. That's why we have to use some function. 
we're going to use the max function. So let me show you how to do it. So get back here and take the same query, paste. So keep the uh, database as mixer. In the query, you select, put instead of star, we have to put max from motor or select motor, the maximum value of motor RPM column from mixer stats. Let's see if this works. And indeed, we have got the maximum value. So time max, the maximum is 4875. And indeed, this was correct. What username do you find in one of the databases? So let's get back and list the databases. See which database holds information about the users. So, Credits looks promising, so let's look in credits. So in here, we're gonna say, say select or show series on credits to show all the columns on this database. So we've got, indeed we've got a uh, user and most probably there is a password here, but let's, for now, let's copy the username. This is the username user.txt it means we have to extract uh, some sort of password and log in and find user.txt so what do we do now what we're gonna do here we have a column called ssh so what we will do we will get back the notes and select in database to be credits and here Select star from mixer stats. It's going to be select star from SSH. So the password is, so we see time PW user. This is the time. This is the PW, the password. Uh, now let's log in to the SSH server. View split. SSH and let's grab the username at connection refused. Ah, back. So SSH is running on port 22, 22, so we have to change that. Yes, the password which we have just found. Excuse me, I'm going to take this here. Okay. Paste. Uh. So the password is wrong. Alright, so now we are logged in and this is your first foothold on the machine. Typing ID to reveal who you are. So we are this user. Who am I? Okay, getting information about the Linux system. Your name. Dash. So we are in Debian uh, Linux 3.16.0. So most probably, in a typical scenario, you would look for exploits for this version, okay? But for the current scenario, um, the we are going to exploit a Docker container. 
So basically, there, if you go to ls, of type ls dash la var run, let me close my email. I don't like the sound of the notifications in Outlook, just tr stresses me out. So, docker.socket, as you can see, it is writable by the group InfluxDB. The user is part of the InfluxDB group, which means we can write on the Docker socket. The ability to write on the socket means we can do some sort of exploitation and uh, get root. But first, we have to find out which port is the Docker running on. So we can type net stat. I think I'm mixing with uh, Windows, right? Let's check out. So, we have a script running here. This script seems interesting. And we have something listening on port 8080. Hmm. But, on, uh, but uh, uh, it seems that we cannot... Um, we didn't see the port in the nmap scan, didn't we? We go back to the nmap scan, you don't see there's a port, uh, a service running on port 8080. Which means, this is an internal service that is uh, blocked uh, from any, I mean, it's not open to the public. So basically, to access the service here, we have to do some sort of SSH tunneling. The part that I hate the most is SSH tunneling, so but we have to do it. <laughs> so basically what we can do here to access the service, we can... Okay, clear here and use SSH. So sudo SSH, the username we have just found is this one. I guess we need the password, so basically, let me run the command one more time to extract the password and put it in the notes. So this is the password. Okay. So do sh. Okay, dash L, port 8080, local host, again 8080, no problem, we can use that, and then the port, oh, and then we put the port that the SSH server is running on, which is 2222, the password, Okay, so now let's see if we can access that port on our browser, or my browser, I guess, it's my browser. So local host 8080. And indeed, we have got access to that port, local host 8080. How about containers? Containers JSON. And as you can see, we have got access to the container. I've got many stuff here to look at. And indeed, as you can see, this is the Docker socket. Okay, I like that. Okay, how do we exploit this container, by the way? So we need to do that in the command line. If we go now to or if you open a new tab here and just type docker h tcp local host container ls so this is the container running sweet tooth incorporation latest and this is the command and it's running on port 8080 8086 
okay because there is a forward here and as you can see because we are using ssh4 forwarding it's showing this address all right so how do we exploit this container what we can do here we can just type the name of the container we have got which is here okay and use the command execute container execute commands just put the name of the container first and then type ls so we listed the current files here but this is not useful for us we need to get some sort of shell back right so what we can do now um, we can create some sort of reverse shell upload the reverse shell here and then then get the connection back so let's see uh, uh, some reversals technically we need a bash reversal the simplest one so let's check out reversals reverse See, we need a bash reversal. I hope I can find one. Okay, this one is good. Let's take this. And tailor the shell to our needs. So paste it here. So now we have to find our IP address, IP config, or if config. Let's put this reversal into a file. So we can say ls uh, nano docker shell sh and now we can upload this. How do I upload that? Get back and here we execute wget. So wget uh, first, we have to run the Python server, I guess. So let's open or split the view. Okay, now run. Nope, not here. So the server is running. Now let's issue the command. Execute wget slash or oh, not slash. The server is running on board eight thousand slash docker shell sh let's see yeah so it has been downloaded now if you issue ls to make sure the shell has been downloaded we can see docker shell here now we execute this docker shell but before that make sure to open the listener nc-lvp4545 um, so sweet tooth now type bash dash i and the name of the shell cannot set terminal process 
inappropriate no control job all right let me check so here we should ah we have a problem so this one is only one forward slash unfortunately we have to redo the work one more time Nano docker shell have only one run the server again redownload let's make sure the script has changed so cat docker shell nope it hasn't changed Let's change names. Redownload. V2. Okay, cat. V2. And yes, now it is correct. All right. NC LVP 4545. Execute the script. dash v2 and indeed we've got the reversal back to our machine id and you are the root user so we have accomplished the purpose of this machine but we will continue with the questions user that oh we forgot the user txt how unfortunate is that pwd cd home cdu z yeah we're not authorized to do tap to completion for some reason. ls cat user txt and this is your flag. Okay, privilege escalation slash root slash root txt. Okay, cd root cat root txt. And this is the second flag. Escape the second root now. What do they mean by escape, by the way? I don't understand. Escape. We have a second root here. Hmm. Huh. root 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 so maybe we have to escape the docker right escaping the docker i guess so to escape the root guys we have to mount the uh, device of the entire machine to a directory of our choice so let's see now df dash dash d dash h so we have one device slash dev slash x VDA1. What we can do, guys, with escape the container, we can mount this partition to a temporary directory. That's how we escape the container. So, what we can do, we can say cd to temp. Okay, make directory dash. Uh, yeah, let me specify the full path MNT. So we have now a directory called mnt. Let's mount now this device. So mount slash dev slash xvda1 to temp mount cd mnt. And now we can escape. We have escaped the Docker, Docker now. We can just easily cd to any directory uh, that was or that is in the actual root file system so we can see it to root cat root car cat 
and this is the final flag definitely enjoyable machine I hope you find that helpful and I will be seeing you in the next video